Alright, so now, since I'm still waiting on uh, circuit boards, cleaned up the wires just a little bit, made the leads a little shorter. Um, I tried to add the interrupter portion of Steve Ward's circuit, but didn't do anything. I think I've killed the enable pins on these drivers by um, over putting over voltage in them, and I think I know how I did that. And I've used this little, just a little antenna here. And I've set it right next to the uh, bottom of L2, hooked to that little piece of metal. And I'm just going to put it up at a uh, rectified smooth mains through the dimmer again to see what it looks like in the dark. I've just got it temporarily uh, set up like this, but uh, with the ZVS, I can cut it all the way up and drop it down to about 60 volts, um, so it's pulling a lot more juice. I'm glad I made this uh, ZVS supply though, because I'm able to uh, pull some pretty good arcs from the, out, the uh, high voltage output from it without having to worry about uh, killing anything. Those are some pretty nice arcs from a ZVS power supply. to show the uh, amount of juice that is feeding off of the bottom of the secondary on this coil here into this little gate drive transformer. See the bottom of the secondary would normally just go straight through here to one end of the primary of the GDT and the other end is going to ground. So 30 volt power supply at 5 amps max, 40 watt 
uh, 120 bulb in series you can see oops, you can see that it will light and it will light very bright if I still give it a breakout I mean you see it's still breaking out putting out a field but once this bulb starts to light up you know it's stealing a lot of juice from it I mean that 40 watt bulb is getting um, way brighter than it's supposed to be there's a crazy amount of juice going in this little transformer here using a uh, feedback transformer to switch this rather than the antenna probably is a better way to go and um, I actually have heard from other people uh, dirt one of them shout out bro that uh, it's probably a better way to do it and uh, he heard the same thing so I'm gonna work on that so I put this coil on there to uh, see what that would do about 82 volts or so It's actually about, it's about 40 watts. It's only pulling about 40 watts. So I've done away with the antenna, you know, using uh, feedback transformers. Um, but what I want to point out is I started out with uh, something like this. This might not be a... Uh, <clears throat> proper toroid for this but um, what I want to point out is I'm currently using one of these one of these little common mode inductors while it's recommended according from what I see to uh, from most from most schematics is to wind one turn from the bottom of your L2 and then you know maybe as many winds as you can get 60 to 100 at least that's what I've seen and that actually worked so but it didn't work too well. The only way it would actually work is if I would kickstart the circuit uh, myself. Using this, it starts up on its own. But I just want to show, uh, you know, I've already shown the amount of power. Gate drivers are being fed. These GDTs are being fed from the SCORI low voltage setups. So now I'm just doing the same thing here with this bulb. I've got this 40 watt bulb in series. This, And now I've got my secondary grounded out through a... a, a my mains ground um, but it's going through this primary on this little feedback transformer first and the secondary is coming out one ends going to the circuit ground and the other is feeding through this bulb first then uh, going to the uh, hex inverter and I'm hoping that I'm not really sure if that's gonna do a whole lot but I'm hoping that's doing a little something the caps there as well as these, these diodes I don't know if they're getting overworked or what, um, but I've, I've, I've ran it for a while like that. Um, adding a resistor on there is just going to burn it up um, unless you've got something like this, you know, which will work um, to drop the signal down, but uh, at the same time, I'm sort of just using this bulb right now. But what's interesting is right now I'm going to show from the uh, ZVS supply here I'm on the low voltage I crank that up so when I crank it up you can see I'm at 34 volts here this is the low voltage output which uh, I mean I can, I'm catching a little RF burn off here low, low voltage output which <clears throat> shouldn't have a problem putting that out so that voltage probably isn't accurate um, and I know it's not a couple amps because I've got a two amp fuse on there so this is probably not working it very hard from uh, that output and it's not too crazy from the low voltage but I mean you can see what's going on there now what's interesting is when I cut it up to the higher voltage high voltage winding on here is not meant to push 
more than enough to light a 40 or 60 watt bulb so now you can see when I cut it up whoops, even on the high voltage winding we're still outputting about 36 volts it's it's dropped it down it's pulling it down a lot and the sub ZVS supply is struggling right now and you can see it's lit that up a little brighter when I start pulling arcs Now you can see the bulb has gotten brighter, but now the supply has sagged and its output voltage a lot less. So now it's working less. So we're at less power now. We got that going. We're still pulling these pretty pretty decent arcs from this ZVS supply. So this is still under a couple amps. And of course I can uh, bypass the bulb. You see it just starts overworking again. For whatever reason right now, having that load on there is helping. Um, right now I'm sort of in the stages of just playing around with it from the ZVS to see if this output is just too much for it. And this is high voltage now. If I, you know, if that's running and I remove that lead, you're gonna pull a nice arc off there, even though it's isolated. I mean, that's that's just what's gonna happen. I was kind of hesitant at first to just run that straight in there like that, um, but this is more or less what happens with the GDT. Um, and, you know, with the exception of this one, all of the GDTs on these low voltage circuits I've got look like this, but they're bigger. Um, so you've really got the same thing going on you've got that high voltage feeding straight in grounded to the circuit ground the battery negative and then you've just got that isolated winding coming straight into the gates and all you've got is these zeners right here uh, to protect it so while you've got that going on with the MOSFETs I mean you're protecting it on that end it's hard to really say if these this hex inverter and these gate drivers are going to have a problem um, with that. Now, I would imagine if you was to remove a C6, I believe it would be, uh, you're going to run into some problems. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm afraid to sort of run this at mains right now because uh, I feel like I'm going to have issues. I believe it starts up in a in a harmonic that works relatively well, but. It pulls an insane amount of juice at that frequency. So until you get it in resonance, um, or it could be a other way around. Um, I'm, I'm pulling it into another harmonic, so it's not pulling as much juice. But I kind of feel like it's going to pull a lot from mains this way. Show, just show real quick now what the uh, bulb bypassed the. I guess the full power using this. Uh, feedback transform from the ZVS supply so when I'm pulling see the ZVS has much less draw on it so this is about 60 volts That's not bad for uh, 60 volts. Deal, but now I've got this bulb um, in series with the ground rather than on the secondary side, it's on the primary side of the feedback transformer now. Cut that up. You can see immediately it doesn't kick into that 35 volt sag down it's not really struggling it's pulling it's putting out but it's pulling what it uh normally would in the region that it liked you can see that bulb it gets pretty bright immediately pull the same marks
So pretty much same deal, but it actually seems to uh, like it better <clears throat> with the load series with the earth ground like that. So I'm still iffy about this on the mains, but I'm just going to show it a little bit. So <clears throat> got no bulb on there, just straight feedback through. And um, I'm going to crank it up a little bit on the uh, dimmer. But already I can see that uh, the breakout is, is different. And I've only got 3 amp diodes, 2 amp fuse, so I'm only going to crank it up a little bit. <laughs> Thirty volts. Here at about fifty. So at about fifty volts about a little over uh, I say about a third third of the way up um, I get about the same breakout length as um, I was getting all the way up from before but it, it doesn't seem quite as bushy and beefy um, but I still get pretty good breakouts and I'm not real sure what that's pulling but it's still under two amps but that thing's probably going to get overworked because at about 30 40 volts that it was causing that bulb to get way too bright so obviously something like this is going to overheat over time I don't know maybe make it a little bigger <laughs> about 80 volts right there <laughs> 